Every year, the Baltimore Kinetic Sculpture Race begins with the blessing of defeat. It is a race where all trained human powered kinetic sculptures complete a 15 mile obstacle and endurance course in order to beautify our world. For one day of the year, the American Visionary Art Museum spreads their unique take on art over the city of Baltimore as dozens of teams gather to race their human powered works of art over land and sea. The race is held the first Saturday in May all around the inner harbor of Baltimore, starting at the museum and even in the harbor itself. You can see some of the sculptures year round in the museum too in the Kinetic Sculpture Barn. At the start of the race, the sculptures climb up to Federal Hill Park, do a quick circle, and this is their line of them. Want to capture every sculpture in the race. Got to do that early because some of them drop out. All the folks around, everybody else on bikes, are part of the pit crew. Each sculpture is required to have as many pit crew as there are people in the sculpture, and a lot of them have more. Quick look at all the crowns. Just It's a huge spectacle, and a lot of people gather out to see this. There's a lot more people gathered at the water, the sand, and the mud uh, obstacles. Two terms you might be interested in are the ACE Awards. That's for people whose sculpture never needs any help getting into the water, out of the water, over the sand, through the mud. The sculpture pushes through it all. True kinetic masters. There's also a few people in the Bush League. Those are sculptures that do not need to enter the water because the goal is to get folks to enter this race. It's a challenge for yourselves and for art. The three main hazards of the kinetic sculpture race are the water hazard, going out into the Chesapeake Bay around the dock under your own power and getting back onto shore. There's also the sand pit, and finally the mud pit, which is the most well-engineered mud I've ever personally been in. For the ultimate in kinetic glory, you need to handle these hazards as well as the 15 mile course without anyone helping, no pushing, no pulling, your sculpture gets through all of these under its own power. That again is known as the Ace Awards. The sculptures on display come from a wide range of different building techniques and different skill levels. Things like the Nanster truck was built from PVC pipe and foam. And you'll notice most are bicycle derived simply because bicycles are a very efficient mode of human powered transportation. Our own to be or not to be from Nova Labs tried to use every part of Nova Labs, every shop. The metal shop was first welding the frame together. We actually made it several bicycles with a go-kart front end for steering. Mixed Media Shop has all the tools for bike maintenance, and the blacksmiths bent our bee holders above the beehive, which was constructed in the Crafter's Cove. Those crafters also sewed and heat-pressed our spelling bee uniforms, and 3D printing made mounts for the horns and bribe necklaces. Next year, we're going to need to add some more fine woodworking from the wood shop, and maybe get some laser-cut parts in there. I'm thinking build some properly constructed wagon wheels. But just to emphasize, if you want to enter this race, you do not need to be professional of any sort. The whole idea of the American Visual Art Museum is to bring art to everyday people. The theme of this race, everyday people. At any rate, hope this was informative, and I hope to see you at Baltimore next year.
I was riding alongside and sometimes on the sculpture for the whole race, running as the pit crew, helping fix flat tires. But I wanted you all to see a bit of the energy of this day, so here's Nova Labs bringing it home, completing the race after the 15 miles, the water hazard, the sand pit, the mud pit, and the streets of Baltimore. support all righty we'll get back to printing soon but thanks for watching and always happy printing